Hi and welcome students. In this Microsoft Access 2016 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change the structure of your tables and add a second table to your database using the external data import feature from Excel. Let's go ahead and get started. So you'll see that I have a database here with one table on it. The first thing I'm going to go over is how to change the structure of an existing table. So I double click on the table to open it up. Now that I have the table open, I can see all of my fields and if I go into the table tools fields tab, I could see the data type of all of the fields as I click on them. Short text, short text, so on and so forth. You can see that as we get over here, this one on the right side is a yes or no one. Now you can see that all of the vendors that are listed here are a current vendor. I could tell that because of all the check marks. Now if you ever have a time in your database where one of your fields is completely redundant, meaning uh, the data is basically useless because it all says yes here, well in that case we're going to have to learn how to delete a field. And so let's go into our table, uh, table tools fields tab, go to the views group, and you can either click the view arrow, or arrow to go to the design view or you could just click the design view button right here and you click that and this is going to take you to the to the design view. This is the backstage view of what's going on in your table. None of the actual data is here, however it does just contain the information and properties for your fields as well as the data type and description for your fields. Alright, so now that we know what this area is, now we're, I'm going to show you how to edit some of the things in here. And I'll be switching back and forth between the design view and the data sheet view to talk more about the data as we go. So you'll see that the first thing we have here is vendor ID. Now this vendor ID column is our primary key. You can tell that because it has a little key icon right here. This means that no two vendors can have the same uh, number or um, the same data here because it's like having a case number. It has to be completely unique. You can see that as we switch back to datasheet view, each vendor has their own ID, which is their unique identifier. So if I'm back in design view here, you're going to see that I have a few options. It says short text, which is a short amount of text um, that can be typed in the actual data. And then over here we have a description. This description can be used to fill out um, a certain piece of information that helps people figure out what this number or what the vendor ID should be. So I'm going to think of a description that will help uh, people input this information correctly. You can see that the vendor ID starts with V and then a hyphen and then the actual vendor ID number. So I'm going to type right here in the description start with V then hyphen then three digit or vendor number. That's going to help whoever's inputting the vendor ID know exactly what it should say. And I'll just put an example. Example V hyphen 001. Okay? And that kind of helps out anyone who's going to put in data and what they know to do. Alright, so the next thing that I could do to ensure that my data is input correctly is right down here under field properties, I could change the field size. I know that the field size of 10 is too large because it should have five characters, V hyphen one, two, three for the digits. Okay, So if I know that, I'm going to change this field size from 10 and I'm going to change that to a 5. Now if I go back to my data sheet view, it's going to ask me, you need to save the table first, do you want to save it now? I'm going to click yes. And then it says some data may be lost. The size of one or more fields has been changed to a shorter size. If the data is lost, validation rules may be violated as a result. Do you want to continue? This is basically telling me that as I decreased my character limit from 10 to 5 on this particular field, if there was say one that was V0001, which would be too many digits, it would cut that off before the 1. And so I'm going to click yes here because I know all of mine fit the rule here. And so you can see none of the data got lost, however, now if I were to type something in down here, let's say I type V1234, which is too many digits, although it's unique, or sorry, V hyphen. One two three four. Although it's unique to the, um, or I'll just put V zero one two three four. Or oh wait, it's not even letting me do it. So the point is, since it knows that it's five characters only, it's not even letting me type any more characters. It doesn't matter how many I type. Basically, it shows right here. This should only be this amount of characters. So that's how we know um, that the validation rule worked correctly. Okay. So I'm going to delete that new record. Okay. 
So going back into here, now we see that we uh, have learned about the description, we've learned about the vendor ID, and so now I can customize a couple more of these if I wanted to. I know that the state code is going to be a field size of two, that's because each state should be abbreviated with the state's abbreviation of two letters, and you can see right here, field size two, so that's correct. For the description, I could write two character state code. And that's just so that it's easier for whoever inputs the data to know what's supposed to go here. I could do the same thing with the postal code. And right here, you can see our postal codes in America. They are five digits long. And so I can set that up for postal code to instead of being 10 digits, I can make that five digits. And so I change that right there. And so that's pretty good too. And remember, anytime I go back to data sheet view, I just have to save the table and it'll uh, warn me about data may be lost, but I know that all of my previous records were only five digits long, so none of the data was lost. Now, earlier on in this video, I talked about the current vendor, which was over here, and it con contained redundant data. Well, I need to delete this field. The way that I could do that is I go to the design view, I go down here to the current vendor field, and it's a yes or no field. To delete any rows, I could either go to the table tools design tab, tools group and click on delete rows or I could right click just to the left of the word vendor in this gray area and go to delete rows. Do you want to permanently delete the selected rows and all of the data in the fields? I'm going to click yes and then I'll go back to my data sheet view and save and you'll see that that is no longer there. So basically when I delete something from the design view it is affected on this table and that's how we change the structure of tables in Microsoft Access. So I'm done with this uh, table for right now so I'm going to close it and now I'm going to show you the second part of this video which is um, how to add a second table using the external data tab from an Excel file. You'll see that I have an Excel file on my desktop. I'm going to minimize this and you'll see the files right here. It's called advisor table. I open this up and I want this data here to go onto a table in Access. So I want to import Ac or Excel data into Access. Here's how we do that. Now this is going to go on a completely brand new table. So all I have to do is make sure that that table is closed. It's very important that Excel is not open when you do this. And I go into Access. I make sure that I do not have any uh, tables or queries or reports, forms, anything open in this area, and I go to the external data tab. Once I go to the external data tab, I'm going to look in the import and link group, and import, the easiest way to remember is, for me anyway, import, it kind of sounds like in, like import, so you're bringing it into your access database. And so I go to import right here, and then right here is Excel. So I'm going to choose my Excel file, so I click right here on Excel, and it's going to open up the get external data from an Excel spreadsheet dialog box. And then I need to find the file. That's my first step. So I'm going to go to browse. I'll go to desktop. And there's my advisor table right there. Advisor table.xlsx. And so I double click that. That's going to open up this table into uh, this database. But first, before I do that, I have to figure out how I want it to be input. Right here is import the data into a new table. That's the one I'm going to choose for this example. Um, they also have an option to append it into a current table, like the vendors table. But if I tried to do that, it actually wouldn't work because all of the headings need to be exactly the same in order to add it to a current or existing um, access database. All right. If you're interested in doing that, I do have a video on my channel on how to do that. And so for right now, I'm going to choose a brand new current, uh, a brand new table. And so I choose that first box bubble right there. Then I click OK. Now this area is really important. It says Microsoft Access can use your column headings in Excel as field names for your table. Does the first row uh, speci specified in your Excel sheet have headings? And you click the checkbox if that is yes. You'll see that my first row here says faculty ID, rank, campus, last name. These are all headings. And so I'm going to click the checkbox for that. And now you'll notice that my records start at 1 right here, right below my headings. So that's very important to note which one is uh, true for you. If I already have my headings set up in a, in a uh, table already here. Maybe I don't choose that, but in most cases you're going to choose it if you're putting in a new table. So then I'll click Next. 
this screen right here is where I could specify information about the table headings. So for instance, this is all pretty much uh, text right here, but if I wanted, say, one of them to be like a currency or something like that, I would just need to click on the heading and then change it to any data type that I want. Okay. Now, my table's already fine. I'm just going to leave these all as short text just to speed up this video a little bit. So I'll click Next. Right here is where we choose a primary key. Access will choose a primary key by default, meaning uh, the unique identifier for each record, which I already mentioned before. And the it'll just put in an ID column, and it'll do one, two, three, so on and so forth. Uh, I actually don't want access to this in my example here because I have a faculty ID. I know that ID numbers are typically unique, or at least they should be. So I'm going to go to choose my own primary key. I choose that right there, and right over here is where I choose the field for my primary key. I could use any of the fields on my um, spreadsheet from Excel, but I wouldn't want to choose something like state, because obviously that's going to repeat itself and it's going to cause validation errors in your database. So instead, I leave this as my unique identifier, which is faculty ID. Each one of these should be different if I'm going to do this, and I see that they are. So then I'm going to click Next. This is where I choose the name for my um, table, and so by default it's going to choose the name of the Excel file, and so mine is called Faculty Advisors. That's fine for this example, but note that you could change your name right here by editing that. And then I'll click Finish, and then it'll ask me to save these import steps. I don't even bother with this, I just click Close. Now you'll see over here on the left side, a new table has appeared. This is Faculty Advisors. I'll double click it to open it up. And you'll see that the Excel data from uh, Excel has been imported into Access. And so it looks like this. Now, first thing that you should notice here is that some of the columns are not wide enough because all of them are default size. You can change any column width by clicking on, or I guess they're called field names in Access. So you could change your field width uh, to any size that you want just by clicking on it going in between the two until you get the two horizontal arrows and the black vertical bar, and then increasing the size by dragging to the right. Alternatively, you'll have ones that are too big and you want to decrease the size, so you just go in between the two and decrease by moving to the left. Okay. Now you could do this with multiple columns at once, but it doesn't really work like Excel. Okay. Um, you can increase, say, those four and go in between them and you can increase them. And so um, that actually is exactly like Excel, but just be careful if you click on one of them and then try to drag because that's actually moving your fields around. Okay, so just note that. If I wanted to change all of them at once, all you have to do is go to the left of the, your first field, which is right here. This is faculty ID. I just go to the left above, or to the left of faculty faculty ID and above the first record and click on this little square right here. When I click that, it's going to select all of the records on my table. And then you can apply a best fit. Best fit works exactly like it does in Excel. All you have to do is go in between two of your columns, any two columns or fields uh, that you'd like, and then double click. When you do that, one, two, it's going to auto fit all of your fields that they're just long enough to fit all of the text inside of them as well as long enough to fit the actual heading name. So that's how we edit that. Uh, once you're in here, uh, basically you can, I'm going to just go over how to print this out real quick should you need to do that. Um, so here's how you print a table in Excel, or sorry, in Access. I go right over here to File, I go to Print, and I can go to Print Preview to see how it'll look and you can see that this uh, data is actually a little bit wider than it is long so I'm going to choose landscape and you'll see that it gets all the way to the point where state is at and then these three hang out or these four columns hang over on the other page so with access it doesn't quite have all of the print options that you might be used to in Excel but I could go right here to page setup and adjust the margins or just the page itself okay um, as far as the print options, once you click print, you could choose your printer, and then you can choose how you want it to be set. Okay, You could choose the records or the pages themselves. And so that's how you would print inside of Access. So um, hopefully this video has taught you a little bit more about changing the structure of your tables inside of Microsoft Access, as well as how to add a second table using the external data tab and bringing that data in from Microsoft Excel 2016. If this video has been helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, put it in the comment section below. Thanks a lot.